In this video lesson, we will learn how to graph the absolute value function. These graphs are actually very similar to the graphs of linear functions, just because the absolute value function is very much like the linear function. But first, let's get a quick review of what the definition of the absolute value is. This will help us clarify. The absolute value of x is equal to x if x is greater than or equal to 0, or negative x if x is less than 0. So what this means is we always get a positive number. If we started with a positive number, we just keep it. And if we started with a negative number, then we flip the sign. We get rid of the minus sign. So there are a few examples of calculations. As you can see, absolute value of negative 3 is just 3, and absolute value of negative 2 is just 2. But the positive numbers just stay the same. Now here is the graph of y equals absolute value of x. Now, you shouldn't really find this surprising, because look, when x is greater than 0, we have y equals x, and that's just y equals x. We all know how to graph that and what it looks like. And when x is less than 0, we have y equals negative x. And there it is, y equals negative x. You can continue these two lines, and you'd get the complete graphs of negative x and x. But in our case, we only have negative x when x is less than 0. And as soon as x goes past that, it becomes positive, then we have just y equals x. Now all the other graphs, we can draw based on that one graph, using shifts and by stretching. So here, let's look at y equals x minus 2 in the absolute value bars, all minus 3. With the dotted line, I'm just making the graph of the absolute value of x. Now we have two shifts here. One of them is a shift in the x direction, and one of them is a shift in the y direction. So the negative 2 by the x means that we're shifting the graph to the right by two units. And then the minus three outside of the absolute value bars means we are shifting downwards three units. So the easiest way to do this is just take this cusp, this corner, and look at where it ends up. So we shift right two, down three, and there it is. And the rest of it's just straight lines. You just draw them straight up in one direction and then straight up in the other direction. And that's the graph that we get for y equals absolute value of x minus 2, all minus 3. So when graphing these absolute value functions, it's important to keep track of where that corner ends up after you shift. After that is done, then the rest is pretty easy. All right, now let's look at the next example. y equals negative absolute value of 3x. So this example is slightly different because we have a 3 in front of the x and then a negative in front of the absolute value. So the first step is we can just factor out the 3 from outside the absolute value bars. That is allowed. So we get negative 3 times absolute value of x. So now let's graph absolute value of x. What does multiplying it by negative 3 mean? Well, first of all, what it means, since we have the negative sign, we need to flip the graph. And flipping the graph is just we make a mirror reflection of the whole thing about the x-axis. So there I'm drawing with slightly a slightly larger dotted line, slightly thicker. This is the flipped version. So that that is actually the graph of y equals negative absolute value of x. But we also need to have this 3 factor in there. And this 3, what it does is it stretches our graph. But what exactly do I mean by stretching? Well, if you remember back to linear functions, we had this slope. For every increase in x by 1, we'd get an increase in y by the slope. 
Well, in this case, we don't really have the slope, not in the same way, but we still have the same sort of change in x by 1 and change in y by some amount. And in this case, we're changing by 3. So as you can see, we've just stretched the graph downwards like this by using the fact that y decreases by 3 instead of by 1. The difference between this and the slope is that when you're always decreasing y no matter if you're increasing x or if you're decreasing x. That's, and that's the difference, is that we have sort of two lines. And actually, one of these lines has a positive slope of 3, and one of them has a negative slope of 3. But anyway, those are unnecessary details. All you need to know is that you stretch the graph, and you end up with the same sort of cusp, but it's a little bit thinner. All right, now let's do one final example. Let's take y equals 2x minus 3 in parentheses plus 1, in, in absolute value bars, that is. So we have a 2x, so we know we're going to have some stretching. And the strategy is always to factor out that stretching outside the absolute value. So I get 2 times the absolute value of x minus 1.5 plus 1. So first, we're going to want to draw the shifted graph. And then afterwards, we're going to do the stretching with a factor of 2. All right. So the minus 1.5 means a shift to the right by 1.5. And plus 1 means a shift upwards by 1. So let's graph that. First, we have y equals absolute value of x. It's always good to have that basic graph in mind, and then you can shift it pretty easily. So we take that corner, and there it is. We shifted 1.5 to the right, and then 1 up. And that's the new corner. So here we have the beginning of our drawing for y equals absolute value of 2x minus 3 plus 1. But we're not quite done because we also need to do the stretching factor of 2. So how does this work? Well, what happens is that first, let's look at the right side of the cusp. If we move 1 to the right, then instead of moving 1 up, we're going to move 2 up. So we draw a point there. And we know that the rest of it is going to be a straight line still. So these two points give us sort of the straight line for one side of the corner. On the other side, if we move 1 to the left, then instead of moving 1 up, we're going to move 2 up. So these two points let us draw the two lines that end up making our graph. Let me show you. If you connect these two points, that's one side. And then those two points, that's the other side. And that is our graph our graph of y equals absolute value of 2x minus 3 plus 1. So that's really all it takes. Well, thank you for watching this video lesson. I hope you found it helpful.